Creative Commons Licenses As explained in the Copyright Basics video on this guide, copyright reserves for creators a set of exclusive rights. Copyright holders control the rights to copy, distribute, perform, adapt, or otherwise use creative works. Sharing a creative work with the world under the All Rights Reserved model of copyright is fine if you're the Walt Disney Company, Universal Music Group, Penguin Random House, or even someone who makes a living from selling their creative work. But others, such as academics and other researchers, students, public policy organizations, and everyday people want to share their work widely. They believe that sharing helps not only others, but themselves. And in today's world, the internet and digital technologies make it very easy to share. Creative Commons licenses provide an alternative to the all rights reserved of copyright. Creative Commons licenses are built on top of copyright, relying on copyright law for their effectiveness. Using a CC license allows a creator to retain her copyright and share her work under a model of some rights reserved. Creative Commons licenses are built using a three-layer design. One layer consists of legal code. This layer is what is legally enforceable in court. Despite the fact that this layer is written for lawyers, all responsible CC license users should be familiar with it. The middle layer of a CC license contains the license terms expressed in terms that are easy for the average person to read and understand. The web pages that contain this middle layer are called commons deeds, and they are what we link to when we place a CC license on our work or use another creator's CC licensed work. The final layer is machine readable. This means that applications, search engines, and other technologies can understand how a work is licensed. This helps you use internet search tools to identify CC licensed content that you can reuse, for example. Four license elements combine to create six CC licenses. Before sharing your work with a Creative Commons license, it is important to understand each of these elements and what they mean. This symbol means attribution, or buy. All of the CC licenses include this license element. Attribution ensures that the user of a CC license work provides credit to the licensor and certain other information, such as where the original work may be found. This element is essentially the same as the requirement to cite your sources in academic work. For this reason, it is easy for researchers and students to understand. It's what we would do anyway. This symbol means non-commercial, or NC. Three of the CC licenses include this restriction. In the legal code, a non-commercial purpose is defined as one that is, quote, not primarily intended for or directed towards commercial advantage or monetary compensation. This is designed to be somewhat flexible. An important point is that the definition of non-commercial depends on the use, not the user. For example, a nonprofit organization that used an NC licensed image in a calendar that they offered for sale would be violating the license for that image. This symbol means share alike or SA. Two of the CC licenses include this restriction. This requirement means that adaptations based on an SA licensed work must be licensed under the same license. Note that SA only applies to sharing adaptations or derivatives of an SA licensed work, not to all uses of an SA licensed work. We will come back to this later. This symbol means no derivatives or ND. Two of the CC licenses include this restriction. This requirement means that reusers cannot share adaptations that they make of the ND licensed work. 
Note that ND only applies to sharing adaptations or derivatives, not to creating them. Because what is considered a derivative work can be hard to understand, let's look at some examples. The following uses are not considered adaptations or derivatives. 1. Format shifting, for example, creating a print copy of a digital file or vice versa. 2. Reproducing and putting works together in a collection, for example, to create an open textbook. 3. Including an image in connection with text, as in a blog post, a presentation slide, or an article. And 4. Fixing minor problems with spelling or punctuation. The following uses are adaptations or derivatives. 1. Translating a work into another language. 2. Creating a movie based on a book. 3. Altering a photo by cropping and or adding filters or other effects. And 4. Syncing a musical work with a moving image or video. These are just some examples of what are and are not derivatives. In an academic context, performing text and data mining on a work could be considered an adaptation or a derivative, but as this activity in and of itself does not involve sharing, it does not violate the terms of an ND license. Now let's look at the six CC licenses themselves. The attribution license, or CC BY, allows people to use a work for any purpose at all, as long as they give attribution to the creator. This is the most accommodating CC license, since it allows anyone to distribute, remix, tweak, or build upon the work, even commercially. Users of a CC BY licensed work, and in fact users of all CC licensed works, must give appropriate credit provide a link to the license, and indicate if changes were made to the work. And, users must avoid suggesting in any way that the creator of the original work endorses their reuse. The CC BY license is considered best practice for open access to scholarship, for example, when publishing a research article in an open access journal. The Attribution Share Alike license, or BY SA, allows people to use a work for any purpose at all, as long as they give attribution to the creator, and make any adaptations that they share with others available under the same or a compatible license. This ensures that a work that is freely available to use and reuse remains freely available. By SA is Creative Commons version of a so-called copyleft license. It is the license required for content uploaded to Wikipedia. Remember, share alike only applies to adaptations of the licensed work. If you reuse a by SA licensed work without modifying it, you are not required to license your work with share alike. For example, you're free to use a by SA licensed photo in a PowerPoint presentation and to license the presentation itself with, say, CC BY, as long as you make it clear that the image retains its original BY SA license. The Attribution Non-Commercial License, or BY NC, allows people to use a work for non-commercial purposes only, as long as they give attribution to the creator. Unlike the Share Alike restriction, this prohibition on commercial uses applies to all reuses, not just adaptations. Remember that NC applies to the use and not the user. Thus, for example, it would be okay for a for-profit university to use by NC licensed materials if they did not charge money for them, while it would not be okay for a non-profit university to charge students for access to by NC materials. Under by NC, cost recovery for printing is permissible, however. Because the NC requirement can frighten away potential users, in most cases, by NC is not ideal for educational or academic materials. However, if a photographer wanted to make sure that her photos on Flickr could be used by others but not for commercial purposes, in which case she would want to be paid, a by NC license might be appropriate. 
The Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike License, or BY NCSA, allows people to use a work for non-commercial purposes only, and only as long as they give attribution to the creator and make any adaptations they share with others available under the same license. If you're not adapting and sharing the work, this license is essentially the same as CC by NC just discussed. If you do plan to adapt a work with a CC by NC SA license, you must share your adaptation under the same license. As you can see, the more conditions that licensors place on the reuse of their work, the more difficult it is for others to reuse it. The Attribution No Derivatives License, or BY ND, allows people to use the unadapted work for any purpose as long as they give attribution to the creator. As mentioned previously, no derivatives does not prevent someone from creating an adaptation of the work, but they may not share their adaptation with others. A no derivatives license can be appropriate for creators who want their work widely shared, but feel strongly about maintaining their work's integrity. They would not be happy seeing their work modified in ways they didn't approve of, for example. In an academic context, some authors are uncomfortable with the idea of their work being translated into another language without their authority, though they're happy to have it read widely in the original language. A CC by ND license would be appropriate in this case. From the reuser's perspective, the CC by ND license allows for liberal reuse of a work so long as the work itself is not modified. The attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, or by NC ND, allows people to use the unadapted work for non-commercial purposes only, as long as they give attribution to the creator. This is the most restrictive license offered by Creative Commons. To sum up, here is a graphic that places the CC public domain dedication and the six CC licenses on a spectrum from least restrictive to most restrictive, with the all rights reserved of copyright being most restrictive of all. We'll discuss the public domain in a moment. But first, a note about computer software and code. Creative Commons urges creators not to apply CC licenses to software. This is because there are many free and open source software licenses that do the job better. As explained in the Copyright Basics video on this guide, Copyright law contains a number of exceptions and limitations, for example, fair use. Uses of copyrighted works that fall under an exception or limitation do not require permission and are not infringements of the creator's copyright. Since Creative Commons licenses only apply when copyright applies, if your use of a CC licensed work falls under an exception or limitation to copyright, you do not need to rely on the CC license or comply with its terms or conditions. In fact, the Commons deeds for each of the CC licenses contain a notice, which states, quote, you do not have to comply with the license for elements of the material in the public domain or where your use is permitted by an applicable exception or limitation. As explained in the Copyright Basics video on this guide, the public domain consists of creative works that are not subject to copyright. Anyone is free to copy, adapt, and share them without permission. Because works in the worldwide public domain are free from copyright restrictions, CC licenses do not apply to their use. Note that no one should apply a CC license to a work in the public domain though a CC license could be applied to an adaptation of a work in the public domain. No one can remove a work from the public domain by applying a CC license to it. For works known to be in the worldwide public domain, Creative Commons offers a tool called the Public Domain Mark. This is not a license and has no legal effect when applied to a work. Rather, it is a label used to mark works known to be free of all copyright restrictions. The public domain mark is often used by museums and archives working with very old works to inform the public about the public domain status of a work. 
In addition to the six CC licenses, Creative Commons has an option for creators who want to take a no rights reserved approach and disclaim copyright entirely. CC0 is a public domain dedication tool. Like the licenses, CC0 uses the three-layer design of legal code, commons deed, and machine-readable license. It enables copyright owners to waive all interest in their works and thereby place them as completely as possible in the public domain so that others may freely build upon, enhance, and reuse the works for any purpose without restriction under copyright or database law. In the academic context, CC0 is considered the most appropriate license for data sets. Thank you for watching this video. Here's a list of sources I consulted to create it. And here is a list of credits for the images I used on the slides. And here are some more images. and the final screen of image sources.